what's making you want to turn that switch on. How am I eating this food? What type of moderation am I eating this food? Am I eating fast food every day? And that's why you want to stop this whole bloating situation and you want to de-bloat that gut. everybody how you guys doing i hope you guys are doing great today we're going to talk about how to de-bloat that gut okay now i've been plenty of time in this stage hold on so it's a little here let me get that for you i've been through this day so many times okay my stomach is sensitive it is just ridiculous it's ridiculous like anything can mess it up and i can be bloated and it hurt my stomach so i'm gonna tell you if you have a stomach like that or even if you don't you these are things you can try for testing out or you can if you're having trouble finding other things for your stomach and for your gut to be bloated then these are the things for you number one write down a list of things that you know for sure that makes you bloated and then write some things that you know that you ate before that you remember didn't bloat you so when it comes to writing down these things that bloat you you are making the elimination process way easier and faster and once you make that elimination process easier and faster you'll be able to pay more attention to exactly what you should eat and what you shouldn't eat to avoid the, the aggressive bloating i know i i know okay you check in parts on everything on that box you know it's a lot we know it's mostly everything that you eat but that's when it comes to having to switch your diet and diet means just basically when people hear diet they mean they hear oh uh healthier and no diet is just what you eat on a regular basis that's your diet you have a healthy diet you have a bad diet you have a healthy relationship with food and you have an unhealthy relationship with food so that is what what it is actually when you pee what type of relationship and what your diet is connected to food you're able to get a better understanding will be better at structuring how you need to eat and what you can eat and what you can get a little bit of and when you eat a little bit of it, it doesn't do too much damage and you're able to reverse it the things that you eat that you know is good but not good for you that tastes good but it's not good for you eat it in moderation or you can just make it at home and make it a less processed type of food as compared to if you was getting it from Mickey D's or Wendy's Burger King whatever whatever fast food or restaurant it's automatically processed and processed 10 times worse as if you was cooking at home so like if you want pizza you want pizza hut make your own pizza man when I started I used to make many little pizzas at my pathway in my house ever since then I'd be like I don't even want pizza hut for real not pizza or whatever we was eating pizza hut little little Caesar's pizza is good and they're telling what was it called what crazy man crazy man that, 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 that was good too besides that i knew what it would do to my body and i knew how it would feel after i ate it and that's where i got the icky feeling where i'm like okay never mind i don't want it no more because when you remember what these food made you feel like after you ate it that's when you be like okay never mind i don't want it that's what worked for me every time when i want something and i know it's not entirely good for me and i know it's gonna mess me up i remember how it made me feel did it make me feel nauseous did it make me feel icky didn't make me feel sicky didn't make me feel bloated like a, like a whale didn't make me feel happy make me have problems walking after eating what does it do for me positively and negatively yes positively oh yeah i wanted something that i actually i got something that i wanted but negatively it did not connect with my body in the way that it should when you eat food you should not be sleepy when you eat food you should be feeling energized or any if anything still awake not taking a nap because that's what i would do it would be this time where i would eat um neutral grain bars i would go to sleep it was just one bar but i would go to sleep right after i did not like that i did not understand like why am i going to sleep and sleeping for so long off of this one little thing and it wasn't just one little thing it was the stuff inside of it really be cautious of what you're putting in your body so for bars let me show y'all this is the only bar that that i use this is mine my ex because it's me but i think this is croker brand okay not sponsor of course but this is the only bar that i eat that does not make me sleepy and it actually gives me energy really invest compare and contrast brands ingredients 
alternative ingredients and stuff like that when making things and eating things like having a salad i really love chick-fil-a salad i'm never going to dish that out my dang going diet but i know i'm going to eat it in moderation and that's the thing don't be so strict on your diet when you're so strict in your diet you're most likely to have a aggressive setback when you have that aggressive setback you might not come back give yourself grace but also have the devotion what's your goal of the type of relationship you want to have with food if you're like, okay, I don't want to have, I can't have this because, oh, I didn't eat healthy last week or something like that. Like, if you are like, I can't eat this because I was like this last week. It's a difference between discipline, devotion, and just abusing yourself. Like, mentally abusing yourself. Like, you can't have anything. You don't, you don't deserve anything because of the feelings that you have towards food. You don't deserve that ice cream because you didn't work out. Like, no, you can still have the ice cream, but make sure you already worked out. Working out, okay, get the good hard part out. And then at the end, yes, you can still have that ice cream, but have it in moderation. You can't have the whole motherfucking cup of ice cream. No, you can have two, three scoops of ice cream. That's what I do. Two, three scoops of ice cream, I'm done. And then it's going to last me the whole whole week into the next week. Because I'm not eating it. I'm not focused on that ice cream like that. I'm not obsessed with the food. I can have a little bit. I'm fine. I'm perfectly fine. Be careful what high sodium. It really depends on your body, your body chemistry, and everything that your body reacts to. Because my levels to certain things may not react on the same levels that you react to. Write down things that quote you. Cut it out. Switch it. Do alternatives into a healthier version instead of getting a salad from somewhere else you can get a salad from chick-fil-a but not all the time because when i saw that sodium level when i saw that sodium level that just said 12 so it was high it was more than what is the suggested or the max of sodium that you can intake in a day and it was past that so i couldn't eat chick-fil-a salad every day like i wanted to because i saw the protein it had like 50 something protein in it i was like oh bad i'm gonna eat this every day until i saw the sodium and i was like, oh no i gotta cut it i gotta cut it so then i made my own chick-fil-a salad you get creamy spinach monterey jack cheese with cheddar cheese i get their creamy salsa that they sell in the store then i add the corn add like the frozen chicken chicken tenders crispy chicken tenders cut it up boom tastes just like it and i know i'm not putting so much salt in my body that's what i mean by alternative number two write down the purpose of what's making you want to turn that switch on wanting to have a healthier relationship with food now your reason may be uh because when i eat food it makes me depressed now it's okay why does when I eat food make me depressed? How am I eating this food? What type of moderation am I eating this food? Am I eating fast food every day, every night, every snack, every every breakfast, every lunch, every dinner, every snack? If I'm doing that, then okay, I have an obsession of just eating out. And it is uncontrollable for me. That does not seem like, that whole week don't seem like it's controlled. It doesn't seem like it has structure. It doesn't seem like you have a certain time frame where you can eat out food or certain days where you can eat out food. This is the thing. Having a healthy relationship is always going to be considered anything, anything in life. Relationships, having a relationship with yourself, a job, overall life. You're going to have to have a rule. You're going to have to have a boundary. So that means 80-20. 80% eat good, 20% eat junk. Or don't have to, I don't necessarily want to say the junk, but you get me. 20% you can eat out. That 80% you eat healthy. But that 20% doesn't always have to be like, okay, only on Saturdays I can eat a whole bunch of junk food that I want to. No, you can eat it even on your days that you're eating healthy, but just eat that unhealthy food in moderation. So it won't overpower that 80%. Power your gut and make that whole bloating situation more works pay attention to what you're putting in your body when you cook or get groceries that you know are more whole foods it's less likely processed and when, even when it comes to chicken and meats and stuff like that it's always going to be processed no matter how you slice it and dice it it's always processed even though you have that mentality in your head you know if you add something else onto that plate and just instead of just protein and that's it you know you're evening it out just like how people yeah you can have protein but make sure you get vegetables it's like 50 50 80 80 20 you're still having that implement of 
having something healthy on that plate so you can have a routine and your body can be used to it and actually digest the food that you're putting in your body most of these processed foods that you're putting in your body because they're already processed your body cannot process something that's already processed that's why it sits in your stomach that's why it sits in your gut that's why it just sits there and makes have that bloating situation appearance that you don't like another one Chew your food. Chew your food. They say chew your food 20, 30 times to make sure the processing process for processing your food is getting off on the right start. When you're just eating, 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 I used to do this a lot because I used to eat food so fast. When I wasn't chewing my food thoroughly, I, I would chew it. I would chew it one, two, three, maybe 10 times. But I still got a little chunk in there that I could have chewed more so it can go down and through my body way smoother than having a big chunk or a little or a big chunk compared to my body of food is just sitting there and it's tougher for my body to digest it it is a bigger piece compared to if you was chewing something and you mushed it all the way down to like baby food you notice you don't really have that bloating situation appearance coming up as much as if you weren't chewing through your food properly chewing through your food properly is chewing your food until it's mushy until it, it's not solid anymore it's like itty bitty bitty particles any bitty crumbs mushy just like how you have to break down somebody's trying to feed a baby they have to already break down that food because they know it's too big for the child it's too big for the child's body to digest so it's essentially the same principle for you and for your body with processed foods for outside that's why you want to stay away from it as much as possible and eat it in moderation because yes i know it is good but it is not good for your body and it's not good for your mental health and being that's why you're on this video and that's why you want to stop this whole bloating situation and you want to de-bloat that gut so i'm trying to tell you what's going to deep load that gut these are things that i have done and these are things that i definitely see a change in like what i'm telling you when i used to be bloated when i tell you i used to be bloated i used to be bloated i used to be like bloated i would used to have scares even though i know i wasn't doing anything okay don't get on me don't get on me even though i was let me, let me, even though i wasn't doing anything sexual but it would just look like a preco got me looking preco three months i was just like what the heck that's how you would be looking and i was like i'm done looking like at the point i couldn't see my cooch i couldn't see my cooch okay i know we experienced that besides the little fupa that we have besides that no it was the add-on to me being bloated i couldn't see my cooch i couldn't I couldn't, I couldn't. I finally figured out what works for me. It might work for you. That's why I'm giving you these tips. Eat what doesn't bloat you. So what I know that doesn't bloat me is pasta. I could have bread, but it was the way I would have pasta. Where was it coming from? And where I'm making it from home or am I getting it from a place? So when I say oh, I really want pasta, I will most likely eat make pasta from home and i won't get bloated if i did get bloated it's most likely because of the cheese but i don't eat cheese like that so i give it a pass and i know how to reverse it the things that i eat i'm going to tell you guys i eat a club sandwich that involves sourdough bread lettuce tomato deli meat and mayo a lot of these things for me does not blow me i eat that and i'm good i feel light i don't feel happy i feel energized i don't feel that added on weight as if you was eating a plate from a restaurant i don't feel that in the morning that's what i would eat in the morning i would eat my fruit you know food not gonna blow my chick-fil-a salad that doesn't blow me it makes me full but it doesn't blow me bloom bloom i use bloom ever since i had bloom i had another one but it was a, it was a different brand i didn't like it i want to be consistent with it so i got something else and this junk is empty almost empty but ever since i had bloom it's been healing my gut i was drinking this every morning and when i tell you my skin got clear the bloating was going away you know of course you gotta poo for this whole deep bloating thing to go away you have to poo so even though you are eating foods that don't make you bloated, you want to eat things that you know is going to have your body consistently functioning. You know your body is functioning well when you have to go poo without a problem. Being constipated is telling you something is backed up. If you're able to poo on a daily, that means that you are unclogging some pipes, stomach region, and you're clearing it out. 
that's the only way you're going to be able to clear this stuff out if you're pulling the toxins out people may be disgusted but we all do this just like how you be when you ate something it was good but then it gave you your stomach was torn up or you was happy to poo because you knew it's going to come out your system if you did like that. So just like how these toxins that you put in your body with these foods that taste good but ain't good for your body, that's what you need to do. You need to pull this stuff out by taking detox drinks. You can get more detox drinks. Discuss one of my detox drinks. I'm going to just tell you guys this. Pineapple, cucumber, ginger. One pineapple, one cucumber, one ginger, one, um, one ginger, two lemons, two oranges, and that's it and you juice that and you drink it for the whole week first thing in the morning don't eat anything until you make that poo once you make that poo then you're all good and you can eat i have more detox drinks that you can make in my ebook i'm going to leave it down in the description below ever since i was drinking that it made my skin clear tummy was flat people's asking me oh my gosh what do you do and i give them that exact thing Anything that you're putting in your body, just like a tea, a tea is going to make you poo. Take hibiscus tea or green tea and do the same thing. Have that to be the first thing that you drink in the morning. Do not, do not eat when you just drunk this drink. I do one bag. No, I do two bags for me because one bag wasn't working. Like It was working, but it wasn't working like how I needed to. I did two bags of the tea. I wouldn't drink nothing. I wouldn't eat nothing after I drunk the tea. Until I pulled, that's when I started eating. And then when I continued doing that, I saw my stomach got flatter. Fasting, I fast from 8 to 3, so it was easy for me to not eat anything when I was drinking the tea because I wasn't eating anything from 8 to 3. Sometimes you have trouble processing or your body being able to function right is because you lack vitamins which need the, that give you that extra push to have your body function properly. Uptake your intake in water okay without water you're dehydrated now you can drink it i have to learn this i didn't know i used to drink water at the point my pee used to be clear and i used to think i was doing something yeah i was doing something for sure i was washing out and flushing all the elements that i needed that showed good indication of my body being hydrated yes i was hydrated from water but i was also erasing the elements throughout my body that I need to function. I didn't know. I thought it was just, you know, on my shit was drinking my water like that. Drinking how much water you really need to drink if you're an adult now. Kids, they can't drink this up to this amount because this body is smaller. So they tend to only need like one bottle a day. But for us, we need four bottles a day. That's 64 ounces. So you need 64 ounces a day. This is how you're going to drink water consistently on a regular basis. Drink one bottle, one whole bottle of water in the morning, first thing in the morning. After that, drink another bottle at 12 p.m. Then after that, drink another bottle at 3 p.m. Then around the time you need to go in, it's around the time to go to sleep, around 7 to 8, you drink another one. So what's that? In the morning, 12, 3, around 6, 7, 8, four bottles right there, you drunk 64 ounces of water with no hassle. Just make sure you have your water on you. If you don't like the feeling of always grabbing a bottle, water bottle always get a big old jug. I have a big old jug and I wear, I carry that everywhere. I don't care how heavy it is, I'm drinking my water. But when you do this, put hydration packets in there. I don't have the box, but it was like hydrate IV, liquidy, liquidy IV, and it was a hydration pack. It was a non-GMO hydration pack. I had the white peach, but I'm gonna switch to green apple, green, green grape. But ever since I took that, my pee has been bright yellow. And they say that's a great indication of hydration and it shouldn't be clear like how mine was before I took that. But when you drink that, you're gonna feel it. You're gonna feel hydrated. You're gonna feel like, oh my gosh, this is what it really feels. You're gonna feel refreshed because you're always hydrated. All you need to do is drink one pack of that a day and you'll be good. I went through everything, but I hope you guys liked today's video. I'm going to see y'all in the next one. My battery is going to die always. And like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm going to see y'all to your cousin, your mama, your doggy, your fish, your cat, your sister, your auntie about me. And I'm going to see y'all in the next one. Bye.